In this color grading tutorial, I'm gonna be showing you firstly how you can expose, but also color grade your Fujifilm F-Log as well as F-Log2 footage to get the best results possible. And today we're using Adobe Premiere Pro. And I'm gonna start right now. So when it comes to shooting any log profile, you do have to treat the footage a little bit different versus let's say you're shooting in a standard profile, for example, and Fujifilm F-Log as well as F-Log2 is no exception. The first thing you need to take into consideration is the native ISO of your log profile, and it depends on which one you're using. F-Log, the native ISO is 800, so you wanna be shooting at that ISO or higher, and the native ISO of F-Log2 is 1,250, which is actually really high for a log profile. So what I recommend doing is buying yourself a variable or single stop neutral density filter, and quite a strong one. Otherwise, you're gonna be shooting at crazy high apertures. For this test, I used the Fujifilm X-S20, one of Fujifilm's newest cameras, and I took it to Malta to take some sample video and photos. And I say the native ISO of 1,250 is really high. And annoyingly, I just didn't have a strong enough ND to actually combat that. So a lot of the footage you're looking at is shot at f5.6 to f8. Another thing you need to take into consideration is your exposure compensation. Now with log profiles, I usually recommend overexposing it, and F-Log2 is no exception. I recommend exposing it between 0.3 to 0.7, even up to one stop, overexposing your footage versus your standard profile. You seem to get the best results when it comes to exposing it for the highlights as well as shadows. Because you've got a slightly increased dynamic range, you can expose a little bit more for the highlights, bring back a little, that little bit more information in post. But enough of that, once you're happy with the footage, let's jump onto Premiere Pro and color grade our F-Log as well as F-Log2 footage. Right guys, so the first thing you want to do is just simply go ahead and open up Premiere Pro. Now to save a little bit of time, I've actually already made a timeline and I've placed four clips on top of it. So I've got clip one, I've got clip two, I've got clip three and clip four. Now, what I've done is I've chosen four different types of clips that've got different brightnesses straight out of camera. So clip one and clip three are similar with the same amount of brightness. And then obviously clip two is a little bit darker and clip four is the darkest. Now, what we want to do is match all four of these clips up. So they've got roughly the same brightness, then we want to color grade it. So we, what we wanna do is get them all to the same standard, so the same brightness and the same look, then we're going to add a color grade over the top. So again, it's going from Rec 709, so that kind of standard real-time LUT that you see on TV, then we're gonna add a color grading look over the top of it. So what we wanna do is go over to clip one first. Now, we wanna move out of uh, basically effects controls, and we want to go over to Lumetri Scope. Now, Lumetri Scope is very similar to a histogram if you've seen one on the back of camera, but it's a little bit more precise on how it works. What it does is it measures the color and brightness of the pixels on your video and it will map it accordingly. So on the right hand side, because this is an 8-bit video, we've got zero all the way up to 255. If you know 8-bit, you've got 255 colors within each color band as well as luminosity and that's measured on here. But if you're not too sure, on the left hand side, we've got zero to 100. So right at the bottom, aka zero, is 100% black, pure rich black. And then 100% at the top is 100% white, so pure white and what you want to do is avoid going too close to the 100 and too close to the zero again it's more of a personal preference I had a, a comment a few weeks ago just saying why don't you want to go to 100 or zero sometimes it can cause this thing called peaking which basically means your pixels on your video have no information they're either true too dark or too bright so you want to balance it in between so once you've opened that now we want to start color grading so we're gonna go over to the right hand side or you can go up to the windows panel and drop down. But you wanna go and find your Lumetri color. And this is how we can control the amount of color and brightness within our image. So we've got firstly, you've got basic correction, creative, curves, color wheel and match, HSL secondary and vignette. All we're gonna do in this specific video is just open up our basic correction. Now inside that, you've got color, and light. So we're gonna go ahead and change light first. So what we want to do is really separate and add a little bit more information to the darks as well as the highlights. As you can see, it's predominantly boosted up above 30% is where a lot of that information is. So we need to start darkening it down. So what I recommend doing is firstly, go into that shadows, 
and bringing that down until you are happy. Again, I'm uh, going for around 10 here. So I darken it a little bit more. What I might do is add in a little bit more contrast, might bring down the brightness there and then go to the highlights and bring that up. And already you can see there's a lot more kind of definition, a little bit more contrast within that. Again, that's what we want to kind of do with the image. So you really want to separate, again, the, the kind of the, the luminosity scope here. You really want to break it apart. So have a lot more information on the bottom as well as at the top. Again, it's depending on what you are shooting. If you're shooting a, a, a black product on a white background, obviously you're not going to be able to do that. But with a general environment such as this background here, you should be fine. Okay, so once you're happy with the kind of separation that we've got, what I might do is go for a little bit more contrast here. So I might go for around 40%. This is when we want to add in some color. Now I'm actually quite happy with the white balance. I shot at 5600 Kelvin for all of these four photos. So I'm not necessarily gonna change the white balance, but if you do have a problem, you can go to your white balance picker here, just click or you can drag these sliders if you wanna make it a bit more warmer a little bit more cooler. What, I, what you can do is actually have a look at your luminosity and where those three bands match up is what your white balance should be. So as you can see, mine is one, so it's very, very right. Uh, but you can see, you know, if I go for a little bit more warmer tone, you can see red is now above and blue is below. Because obviously red is predominantly found in warmer colors and blue is predominantly a cooler color. And it's the same situation if we flip it. So you can see blue is now on top and dark red is down below. So what you wanna do is get that to match up as best as you can so I'm gonna go for about there, which as you can see is about one or two. So I was very right with the white balance. And with saturation, what I'm gonna do is just increase saturation till I'm happy with the result. Don't go too far. So if you go all the way, it starts looking like color puke. In this specific example, it actually doesn't look too bad, but I'd find around about 130 seems to work for most photos. And then what you want to do is once you're happy with the first one, you wanna move over to the second one. Now a little cheat to speed up this process, cause this might seem like it will take a long time and it does if you're doing it basically clip by clip, which is what I recommend doing, but to speed up the process a little bit, especially if you shot in the same environment, is we can actually copy and paste our Lumetri uh, color changes. So what we can do is go to the top one here. So this is the clip that we've just changed. Go to our effects controls. You can see you've got your Lumetri color here. Right click on that and we can go to copy hover over our next clip, which is this clip here, and I'm just gonna go ahead and press Command V and paste all of that information that we've just done from clip one onto clip two. Now, as you can see, because the brightness of clip one is a bit brighter, it doesn't necessarily work with clip two. So what I'm actually going to do is brighten it up a little bit but it can speed up the process, especially if you shot in roughly the same environment. Now we can do is go back to our elementary color just to make sure. And as you can see, we're just clipping the top here. So I'm actually gonna reduce it to uh, basically, I think zero would be okay. Yeah, not gonna change the exposure. And what I might do is bring down the blacks a little bit more, bring down the shadows a little bit more there. And again, what we can do, go back to our effects controls, go to our elementary color, right click, go to copy, Go to our next clip here, and then you can just press Command V, paste that over the top. Again, always make sure we go back to our Lumetri scope to make sure that you're happy with the changes. Again, I'm probably gonna brighten it up a little bit, bring down the shadows back a little bit more, so go for minus 80 in this specific example, and then probably go to minus 40 in the blacks. But again, really happy. And then the last thing we've got here is our last clip. So again, I'm gonna basically press Command V, paste that over the top. But as you can see, this one hasn't worked as well. So I'm gonna brighten it up. Now I'm gonna darken it a little bit, go for minus 0 0.3. But what I'm going to do is brighten up the highlights here. We go for 50 and then bring up the shadows. Well, let's keep the shadows the same. Let's go for minus 80 in this example. So now what we do is look through all of the clips and they've got roughly the same brightness. But obviously the problem is they don't look great because this is what it kind of looks like straight out of camera. So what I recommend doing is adding in a LUT or a lookup table. Now I sell a few on my website and there's also a few free available. So the way I personally add in LUTs, go to your new item icon, go up to adjustment layer, go ahead and just click okay because that's the size that we're working with. What I recommend doing is always make sure you're naming stuff. So I go to naming, I'm just going to go uh, CG, which stands for me, just stands for color grading. What you could do is now drag that above all four clips. So as you can see, it will affect all four clips at the same time, which is really nice. Then what I recommend doing is go off your basic correction 
and going down to creative. Now, this is where we can add in our LUT because we can control the intensity, which is really important. Now, inside your look here, you've got a bunch of free LUTs that you've got available. But what I'm going to do is go to browse. I'm gonna go and add in my own personal LUT. So I'm gonna go to my LUTs here. I'm gonna go to colors. And then I'm gonna go ahead and add in green and orange as the LUT that I used for this specific video. And as you can see, we've now applied a LUT. Now, as you can see, it's a little bit too strong. So because we've added it in creative, we can go to our intensity slider and we can drop that down to around about 50%. I find that works well with most LUTs. And as you can see, we have now successfully color graded it. And because we've used an adjustment layer, it color graded them all simultaneously. So because we've matched all of the brightness going through each individual clip and making sure we're happy before we've applied our LUT, we've got a lot more of a consistent look pretty much straight across all four of our videos. Now this one I'm thinking is a little bit too contrasty. So what we can do is go to our basic correction here and just simply reduce that. I might brighten it a little bit more. But as you can see, really happy with the results. And there we go. It's really simple just to spend a little bit of time making sure you've got the right brightness and luminosity, making sure you always refer back to your luminosity scope. And then all of your, it should be really simple to do. It's, it's, this is my technique on pretty much coloring any log profile, but more specifically F-Log2, because with that high ISO, especially native ISO, it can be a little bit challenging to get the right bright and right shadows. But as long as you expose it correctly, it should be really simple when you open it up in Premiere Pro. Here is the before, and here is the after. And here's a 25 second clip of all the videos that I've just made. Well, thank you for sticking to the end of this video. I hope you found it helpful and informative. Now, if you'd like to learn about any more log profiles, there are a lot out there, including Canon, Sony, and DJI. I've got my playlist just up here. Or if you'd like to learn more about Premiere Pro, I've got my tutorial playlist just up here. I've been James for Video Fever, and I'll catch you guys next time. Mm -hmm.